Hello everyone and happy spring. I'm Hayden Mahan, meteorologist here at the WFO in Salt Lake City to talk about our water outlook as we head into our snow melt runoff season. Now, picking up where we left off on the last video, recapping the month of March, it was a very active month, especially for portions of central and northern Utah, where areas saw anywhere between 100 to 200 percent of normal precipitation. As you went further south, though, those percentages dropped off a little bit uh, near normal conditions across southwestern Utah, and as you headed, head into eastern Utah, it got a little bit drier than that. Early April, so the first nine days of April, we had a trough over the west that provided a lot of precipitation, spe specifically for central Utah, where areas saw up to 200% of normal precipitation, and then areas across northern Utah saw a smattering of above and below normal, whereas southwestern Utah uh, missed out on a good chunk of that precipitation. All in all, water year to date, October 1st through April 9th, near normal conditions for central and northern Utah, better in the mountains uh, where the snowpack was able to build up. However, as you uh, head into the valleys, uh, near normal to slightly below normal, with much below normal conditions across southern and southwestern Utah, where it was a very dry winter for them. Looking at the departure from, from normal temperatures for the first nine days of April, as I mentioned, we had that trough sitting over much of the western U.S. that allowed temperatures to stay several degrees below normal, particularly as you head towards the Four Corners region. And looking at the percent of normal precipitation, you can see, again, much above normal precip for the Four Corners area and portions of central Utah, and near to slightly below normal precip for portions of southwestern Utah and northern Utah. Looking at our departure from normal temperatures for the first three months of this year, so January, February, and March, you can see uh, near normal to above normal temperatures across the entire area with precipitation being near to slightly above normal for northern Utah. But as you go further south, we start seeing those uh, well below normal precipitation anomalies. And a lot of this has to do with the La Nina pattern that we had this year. And it was a very typical La Nina pattern, as we saw uh, the storm track uh, further north with a lot of our storms coming into the Pacific Northwest and moving southeast. So that favored areas uh, further north uh, with near normal precipitation. But as you go further south into the desert southwest, uh, much drier conditions uh, historically dry for, for some areas of the desert southwest. <clears throat> and what that meant for snowfall, so we we had a lot of northwest flow systems uh, that moved through, uh, so that meant uh, a lot of areas that do well in northwesterly flow uh, actually fared pretty decently. Uh, now, a lot of these storms, they didn't really, uh, they, they kind of had weak dynamics to them. So a lot of this precipitation, especially the snow, was orographically forced. And you can see that when you look at the uh, location for Salt Lake City, the airport received 18.1 inches of snow on the season. Uh, but just a little bit further to the east, the Bountiful Bench um, was near normal precipitation, near normal snowfall, I should say, uh, with anywhere between between 70 to 90 inches of snow on the year. And you can see the, the figure on the right shows the percent of normal snowfall. Uh, a lot of valley locations well below normal, but as you go up in elevation, especially across central and northern Utah, you start to get to uh, near to even above normal snowfall for areas. However, as you head into uh, the further south you go, the, the much lower uh, than normal, um, you, you start to run into conditions that were much lower than normal. 
and uh, recapping our snow water equivalent statewide, um, it really came in four uh, kind of uh, storm uh, trains, uh, if you will. Uh, the first one being in early November. Uh, that's what really got the snowpack going. But then we kind of plateaued uh, for a few weeks. And th this was kind of the pattern. We would get to near normal, and then we would plateau and get well below normal. And so by the time the second uh, wave of storms uh, got here, it, it really just caught us back up. Up to normal and then the third here in late February and then um, a couple of storms here in March and April um, that really got us to near normal in terms of snow water equivalent on average for statewide uh, but you can see that uh, we've reached our uh, snowpack and we are starting to melt off that snowpack uh, right around uh, climatological normals being early April, April 3rd uh, being the exact date. So this trend will continue as we are going into a much drier and stable pattern with much warmer conditions. So this snowpack will continue to deplete as we go into the next couple of weeks. Then looking at our snow water equivalent by basins, now don't focus too much on the exact numbers here. Uh, as we get to this time of year, those start to, those numbers start to skew a little bit with the snow melt and runoff. Uh, but just in general, you can see central and northern Utah near normal to slightly above normal snow water equivalent, but much below normal as you head closer to the Arizona border. And here is where uh, the snowpack sits currently. This is how much water is in our snowpack. And you, you can see that it's mainly confined to the higher elevations. We've melted off a lot of our middle and lower uh, elevation snowpack. You can see here back on one month ago, we did have a little bit more lower and mid elevation snowpack, but we have since melted all of that off. Again, we didn't have too much in the way of mid and lower elevation snowpack for the year to begin with. Uh, so what we did have is all melted off, but we still do have quite a bit of water up in the mountains, especially for central and northern Utah, not so much uh, further down south. And if we compare this uh, this time this year to what we were seeing last year, you can see how much more snow was widespread. Again, last year was uh, quite a bit above normal for precipitation across the area. And then if we look back to our historic season, two years ago, you can see just how much snow we had on this date two years ago. A lot of low and mid elevation snowpack and tons of water at the high elevations. So uh, really, if you look at this year, especially for central and northern Utah, this is more typical of what we tend to see. This is more average. The past two years were just so abnormally wet that um, it, it makes this year uh, seem seem abnormally dry, even though it's 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 near normal for central and northern Utah, albeit uh, very dry for southern Utah. Now, we are still reaping the benefits of these very wet winters these past uh, couple of winters. You can see our reservoir levels are very healthy. We're actually slightly above capac above uh, where we were this time last year in terms of capacity, and about 20% above where we typically are this time of year. And we will continue to benefit from the past couple of years. Uh, that water can take a while to to reach these reservoirs, um, sometimes on the order of months to even a year or two um, from the time the water melts and percolates through the rock and the soil and finally gets to the reservoirs. Um, so we, we are certainly still benefiting from the past couple of years, uh, really wet winters. And then looking at soil moisture conditions. So this is going to tell us how efficient the water is going to run off uh, into these reservoirs and streams this year. Um, so the drier the soil, uh, the less efficient of runoff, the wetter the soil, the more efficient. So you can see this past fall, um, really before the snowpack, snowpack started to get going, um, we were dealing with drier than normal soil conditions across all basins look back to the previous fall and we were dealing with 
uh, wetter than normal soil moisture conditions. And so area wide, uh, that is, uh, it's showing drier soils across all basins, uh, especially compared to last year. So what that's going to mean for this year is a little bit less efficient uh, runoff, we're going to lose some water, uh, just to replenishing those soils and moistening up those soils. Um, so a little bit less efficient runoff. And then looking at our soil moisture conditions, uh, again, this graph is a little bit skewed because we've just recently been melting off things. So the soil moisture uh, appears to be a little bit more moist than what the reality is. Um, but overall, we're looking at near normal soil moisture conditions for northern and central Utah again, coinciding with that near normal snowpack. But as you go further south, our soils are a little bit drier. And then the, the graph on the right shows our statewide view of soil moisture conditions uh, right at average, but we've started melting off a little bit earlier. So expect that peak to probably come a little bit earlier before our soils start to dry out in those hotter, drier months uh, of summer, June, July, and August. So what does this mean for our water supply forecast? So how much water is going to be entering these reservoirs and streams? Uh, well, looking across central and northern Utah, uh, we have some areas that will be uh, slightly below normal um, to near normal. So I've circled down here uh, the Bear River, probably seeing about an 83% of normal uh, water supply. Uh, Weber at Oakley, about 80%. Big Cottonwood, 85 Provo, 91%. But then going into southern Utah, the severe at Hatch, about 30% of normal where we're seeing very dry soils and a very low snowpack compared to normal. Um, so the water supply forecast generally favors below to well below normal uh, supply along with, um, but areas that do have better water supply are going to be in those areas with better soil moisture conditions and better snowpack conditions. Um, all in all, not expecting too much in terms of uh, uh, flooding along reservoirs and or along rivers and streams, uh, probabilities less than 10% across just a few, few areas. Uh, so flooding shouldn't be too much of a concern uh, this year during our snowmelt runoff. And in terms of drought, we have seen drought development, especially across western and southwestern portions of Utah, where severe and extreme drought has crept in. As you go further north and northeast, uh, we have uh, abnormally dry and some moderate drought conditions uh, uh, persisting. And as we go forward, this uh, drought outlook through the end of June. Um, drought is probably going to persist in the areas that it exists already, and drought removal is not very likely. However, drought development for new areas is also not very likely. Then looking at the CPC one month outlook for temperatures, expect above normal temperatures for southwestern portions of the U.S. along with below normal precipitation. This is for the month of April. And then as we go out for the three-month outlook, those areas kind of stay the same with a little bit more um, greater probabilities of below normal temperatures across uh, much of Utah and, and really the inner mountain west. Um, and that goes through the end of June. So key takeaways, large difference exists between snowpack across northern Utah versus southern Utah, with southern Utah struggling to reach even half of median snowpack. A warm and dry fall resulted in decreased soil moisture statewide, which is expected to produce poorer runoff efficiency as we continue throughout the spring, um, especially compared to the last couple of winters. However, silver lining, uh, reservoirs are still sitting at 20% above median capacity statewide. Across southern Utah, low snowpack combined with low soil moisture is likely to result in increasing drought conditions. And snowpack has peaked across all Utah basins and will gradually decline in the next several months. 
And um, if you would like to reach out to myself, uh, you can, uh, here is our contact information, as well as our senior hydrologist, Glenn Merrill, um, and our meteorologist, Julie Cunningham. We're all part of the hydrology team here at the forecast office. Um, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, we will see you in the next update.